So I want to talk about submerged power centers and corporations. And these are basically power centers that exist outside of the organizational structure. <clears throat> or they may exist as part of the organizational structure, but in a surprising way. So organizations are typically built in a tree structure or with multiple vertical stacks that represent divisions and towers. Um, and if you can get cross communication where people talk across those towers, that's actually really good for the company. And so, and communicating outside of the normal communication chain is good. It's bad if major decisions are made that way, um, because it usually means something broken. But it's it can be good because the company can be more efficient and make better decisions. I'm going to talk about the cases where that doesn't happen, where that's actually a negative. So, cross org power plays may not be as good if um, you have different groups making uh, like fighting change or they're uh, defending their turf outside of the divisional structure. Well, the turf defense can be bad in the divisionals. Um, sometimes people on the technical side will actually have a technology or vendor alliance more than the company. And company side sometimes bring this on their, themselves. And other times it's just something that you got to go after. And you can also have culture and group of any. So that could either be uh, geographical, it could be cultural, it could be patron oriented, where you have uh, people who are aligned with a particular mentor or particular person who has a lot of influence and that can change uh, how the things operate too because you may break up that person's empire but their people are still aligned with them. So I created this simple chart to try and get, put a picture to this and look pretty on the snapshot for the YouTube video. So when you have an organization with multiple divisions, the official order of influence is, and which aligns a lot with Conway's law, right? The true organizational structure is how stuff actually gets built and it's how things communicate. And so you will reorg sometimes in an attempt to adjust how stuff is delivered and how things are aligned. The embedded power structures will actually fight that. They may, if you align with them, it may work better. If you align against them, you have to break them or mold them or refit them. So the main areas I mentioned before are geography. You'll see this sometimes. Um, sometimes it'll manifest as a company purchase and it turns out that all of the companies that are purchased have no real influence because it's only the home office or the original company and its original geographies that have the influence. Um, and so this will sometimes subvert reorgs, right? You'll see it in a case where um, you may do a reorg. And I, I worked in a large bank in Northern Virginia and pretty much a major number of the re of the organizational changes that were made ended up undone within six to nine months. A lot of those were undone by geographical uh, affinity for the organization. And you saw this with some offices. The one office never lost headcount and all the others did, or the others had high turnover. Um, yeah, another area is uh, technical or vendor alignment, which I talked about before. And this can actually really torpedo major changes. And I'll talk about some ways this has been overcome. Uh, another one is behavioral cultural. So this is actually the topics I talked about before, but I wanted to give this chart and the notion that there are an unlimited number of a large number of these potential vertical or slightly diagonal bars that work across the organizational structure that can either enhance it or they can subvert it. Like if I was in the tech world and I wanted to do to testing, it might make sense to have a community of practice or an agile community of practice or some other kind of community of practice that works across groups. But those tend not to drive or undo changes that are made, being done. So, um, I, I t and you know, technical alignment. The, a really good example would be the '90s database administrators, um, or things called resume-driven development, where you have people. Uh, a company will make a decision, and then people will fight it because of the skill set they already have. You might call this skill set too. And sometimes the company's wrong and the people are right, but you got to figure out which one it's going to be. So again, these are the major areas that I've always worked with, and this was kind of, you know, the ways you can see this happen where it goes bad. So example power centers to me, uh, I worked in a couple banks, and I worked in one, and no matter what the company tried to do, we were, uh, I worked in loan organizations and banks, no matter what we tried to do, the one division always won out, and no matter what the company was trying to do in leverage, um, every one of the changes we made ended up after six to nine months being reoriented around uh, where the big dog in the yard always got the bone. And I, I worked in an insurance company, a couple insurance companies, more than one, where this has happened. Another area, like I said, a specialty area. I put finance in here because I was trying to think of things that I don't know anything about. Um, you'll see this sometimes in certain kinds of business directors. Um, 
There might be a job title or a job group. I've seen this in technology areas. Database administrators were the ones in the 90s that were definitely in that way. Um, or it could be some other technology. I could be the one who runs the new cloud operation and therefore everything everybody done, they need to funnel through me. Um, and my people are actually end up being more important or if we don't buy into something, it's probably not gonna happen. Um, there are some other examples of this. Um, and actually these are the same ones I gave you a minute ago. Another one that kind of feels this way, like there was a hidden power center and those were the people that actually ran the mainframes and social security processing. Nobody wants that to, disappear well i mean there are some people that do but there's anyway uh there and so there was a notion to get off the mainframe since before in the mid 90s and there were a couple times when groups changed the organization of social security to try and make that happen and sometimes those groups woke up completely without a job unbeknownst to them they'd come in and they'd no longer be working there because their department entire department had got slashed because a group of people uh, as an embedded power base had managed to undo whatever that change was they'd been trying to do. And sometimes you'll see the easiest ways to actually um, make this, uh, to break this, to actually make a change that uh, does what you want. Um, oh, did I not reload this? I thought I made this change already. Nope. Okay. Well, you know, that's what happens when you're not paying attention. So it's the internet is actually not call centers. Internet is a paradigm shift that actually broke a lot of power centers. Um, it changed the way people could operate. It changed how they needed to think, and it gave power to new people in an organization. Um, and in some cases, it aligned on the on the divisional boundaries, but in other cases, the internet uh, took a life of its own. Another one on the tech side is cloud computing. Um, the database mafia I talked about before, and look, I work with a lot of great database people, um, but they basically controlled big parts of the organization. Cloud computing actually made a lot of people able to do things they didn't have to have the specialty things anymore and it broke the chokehold uh, not only of them but other groups um, it turned out you could have been the data um, the data gurus and no longer are you the data have the only access to data because now it's in the cloud and there's a whole bunch of tools out there that give way more people access uh, democratize access to data in your organization so that's really what i i had a longer version of this and nobody's going to want to watch the longer version so main thing that comes down to is you might want to pay attention to this it can be useful to know where the submerged power centers are it can also explain the changes if you see org changes and then you see org changes undone or partially undone more than sometimes it's because the business has changed and other times it's because some of the embedded power centers are taking action so that's all i got i hope this is interesting if you have questions comments good or bad send them to me and i'll be happy to read them read them and delete them. I mean, reply to them on the channel. Have a great day.